little sticks inside the inside the firebox. A bit of paraffin on a rag. Right, so that's. Drop. That's in there. That's quite a paraffin. Shut that now. Now I need to put the steam raising blower on. Which draws the fire through. This is something I made out of uh, a Morris Salzen heating fan. And then I need to open this, which is up to the damper flap at the bottom. And uh, just like a normal fire. So we'll leave those sticks to uh, burn away merrily. And when they're going well, we'll put some coal on. Right, so we've got the fire crackling away in there. And what's happening is inside this portion, the firebox, is a smaller box, which is about that cubed. It's surrounded by water. And that's the, that's the, that's the air's drawn in through the bottom, through the grate, in the firebox. It heats the water around it. And then, and then instead of going, going straight up a chimney like it would in your, in your, in your house, it goes through some tubes. And inside, inside this boiler are 18 tubes and they carry on through the, the end here. The boiler stops there, and this is a smoke box. And then, and then all, the, all the hot smoke and heat off the fire goes into this void and up the chimney. And as it's passing through, it's heating all the water up inside the main boiler part there, as well as all around the, the, the firebox walls. So it's an efficient way of, um, of, of heating water. And basically, the more tubes you, you, you have in there, the greater area of, of, of heat that's, that, that's, that's heating the water up. And uh, for an engine, a boiler this size, 18 tubes is about, is about normal. So I'm going to take this off now. We don't need that because, because now we're at sufficient pressure so we can open, open this blower which is letting steam go up the chimney and uh, hoping to draw the fire through the fire tubes and keep the fire going by itself and raising the pressure. So that, 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 that steam raising blower is there just initially, just, just to give it a helping start, just to get going. So we're at 30 now, so we need, we need to get up to about, about 100 really. 100 it's, psi. It's working pressure is 125, but uh, uh, 100, 100 it runs fine at that. So. so, so steam engines can be potentially dangerous, can't they? They can be. Uh, it's um, this is rated at 125 psi working pressure, uh, and it has safety valves which which will blow off if it gets if if, if it gets to that, just to stop the pressure going above there. And there's a tool just in case one fails. So just to keep everything nice and safe, because potentially there's that much pressure, you know, it's, it's like a bomb. So just to keep things on the safe side. When this gets gets going a bit further, on a bit more, we can turn this this uh, this blower off, and and and, and it'll it'll just uh, draw the fire itself. It'll be all right at that. And and then we can shut the the damper damper flap at the bottom. So the damper flap at the bottom is the same as the damper flap that you'd have on your log burning stove at home, is it? Exactly the same, yeah, 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 yeah. Like a coal fire at home, you have a flap which you open up, it lets, it lets the air, the air draw through the fire grate and then through the coals itself and, uh, and, 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 and sends it way up the chimney. Uh, if you knock the damp, the, the, shut the damper, then it just quietens things down a bit and uh, it'll burn it at a less ferocious rate. Do you need to use any special type of coal? This is this is uh, small anthracite uh, lumps, just from the local coal man, really. Nothing special. I mean, 
uh, you can use Welsh coal. That's the, they say that's that's the best, but obviously it's more expensive. It's harder to get hold of. This is fine. It takes a bit of um, taking hold. You know, you need plenty of sticks and paraffin in to get it going. But uh, but once it's going, it, it it burns like you can see now. No smoke, so it's all nice and clean. A smokeless, environmentally friendly steam cycle. Keeps everybody happy. You don't want to upset the neighbours when they've got the small slapping on their washing line. Getting full of smoke. So there we are, 50 psi now. It's going up all the time. We've got a glass gauge on this side that seems to be bobbing up and down a little bit. Can you explain to us what that is? Yeah, that's the sight glass. They've all got sight glasses uh, of engines. Some have two, it's a matter of safety, just in case one fails. But but you've always got your eye on the on the on the uh, on the sight glass. Uh, What's the sight glass telling us? That's telling us the level of the water. So at the moment now it's up to there. So everything above there is steam, below it is water. If it gets too low, you don't want that to happen because then um, the fusible plug is exposed on the crown of the firebox, which is which is like a brass plug filled with lead. The lead melts and uh, steam rushes in, puts the fire out. Again, another safety matter. All steam engines have to have fusible plugs, but uh, you don't want that happening. So so you make sure it's um, it's at that level. If you get too much water in, then uh, then you'll be trying to run your engine on, on a mixture of steam and water, which you don't want. You just want steam. So it's a bit of a balancing act, really. So you've got water in the boiler and you've got water in the tank at the bottom. Yeah. Do you need to transfer the water from the tank at the bottom into the boiler or does that happen automatically? Right, well, let me just turn this off because I think that should be all right. So I've turned, I've turned the blower off now, so, so it's drawing by itself. I've still got the damper open. Uh, right, the water. Right, yes. If the, when the water gets, gets low, because obviously it, it's producing, it's turning into steam, so it's, it's, uh, it's going down all the time, slowly, it's a water level. So it needs two methods of repl replenishing the, the boiler with water. Uh, this has got a, um, a feed pump, which, which runs all the time, the engine's uh, turning over, uh, and also a steam injector, so... Can you show us those? Uh, I can show you them, but can't operate them yet because there's not quite enough pressure. But basically, you, you, open, you, open, you open that, that lets, that lets steam, in, steam into, the, um, into the injector, and you put water in as well, and, and that will pump that through into the boiler. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you it when uh, when the time arises, when it when it needs replenishing. So now it's, we should be in a position where something should happen. We're above 75 psi, and it's still it's still rising. Uh, so let's see if we can cook some life out of it. Hang on. There we go, it's all turning around. Fuel leaks, I'll sort that out in a minute. That just wants to tighten up that grand nut. Just get my spanner and sort that out. A bit. There's always something to tinker about with, always something needs to tighten. Are leaks a general hazard of steam engines? Well, you always you always get get just out of the glands there, because there's a gland in here because the steam's going either side of that piston, moving that rod up and down. So so it does leak out of there a fair bit. But of course I've just started opening this condensation in the lines. So if I if I uh, if I open this, then then you can see the water coming out out of out of either side of the uh, the cylinder. That's a wet steam coming out, condensation in the line. So once we've got rid of that, then uh, we can we can shut that off, and then it's just running 
running off the steam with no water in. And what sort of a steam engine is that? Is that a single expansion? Is it a double expansion? It's, uh, it's a double acting steam engine. Um, yeah, single cylinder. So, so, so the steam goes through ports at either end in this cylinder into the piston and uh, just moves the piston backwards and forwards. Double acting, double acting steam engine. So yeah, while it's doing that, you can see it's, turn, it's turning this round, which is the mechanical lubricator. Uh, inside here is steam oil. That's pumping oil in to lubricate the piston rings. So everything's uh, nice and free in there. Uh, yeah. And what's the little pump at the bottom doing? What's that, sorry? You've got a pump on the end of the crankshaft. Right, well, this eccentric here is moving that, that, that rod up and down, which is moving that pump. And what that, what, 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 what that is doing is, is it, bear in mind, this tank is full of water. It's pumping water from the bottom of the tank up to the top all the time. Hence, hence that, that, that valve is pointing that way. If I, uh, if I turn, turn this valve, that way, and it shuts it. A bit of fuel more. And you can see it shuts the valve. And what it's doing then is sending water up this pipe straight into the boiler, which is um, which is filling the water full of filling the boiler full of water. That's the feed pump. Now it has a it has a steam injector as well, which is. Uh, which is this, we, we, open, we open that, steam goes down there, we open uh, one of these, which, which, which lets the water into the injector, and that will pump through this other pipe and put water directly into the, into the boiler. So it's got two methods of replacing that boiler full of water. Is that for safety that you have two methods? Or yeah, is that yeah. just for system? safety. Everything with steam engine, really, if you've got two of everything, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it keeps things a lot more safer. You know, two safety valves, two methods of uh, replenishing a boiler, and sometimes two sight glasses. So, so yeah. So, so if that engine's turning, if like if you're if you're actually in motion, you're riding, or you just got it ticking over, then you, then you can use use uh, use a feed pump down there, or, or or if you if you've got it you've got it turned off altogether, then then. That doesn't need to be running. You, you can you can just turn your steam injector on, fill the boiler up. I think you mentioned that you've got a four-speed gearbox on this. Um, yep. Does it work in the same way as a conventional motorbike gearbox? Yeah. This is this is a well, it would be a 1950s uh, Aerial Square Four pre-unit gearbox. That it's four-speed. It's a Berman box. Uh, so yeah, I've got hand change here, which I can change gear with. And, um, and and I've got the added bonus of having a clutch on, on, on the end of the gearbox so so I can disengage it uh, as needs be. There's a bit of a story with the saddle, I believe. You've <laughs> even made that yourself. The saddle started off life as uh, the leather on a, a vaulting horse. It's a good friend of mine. Uh, he used to he used to service gym equipment and uh, and he kindly uh, gave me a nice piece of leather, uh, which uh, which I fashioned into into that seat. So I showed you on YouTube how to do saddle stitching. So I learned how to do that and uh, made the seat pan, and uh, and it's turned out very nice. And with that ticking over, so it's still building up pressure up slowly. Let's just keep an eye on the fire. You're always always watching the fire. I was watching the pressure gauge. Now we'll give it a little puck. I've still got the damper open. Probably put a little bit of coal in there. Bear in mind, this is all new to me. I'm, I'm no expert at all. I've, I've, I've just picked it up over the past few years because I was interested, just talking to people, really. How is the power of a steam engine rated? Is it in horsepower? Is it in kilowatts? Well, it's it in... nominal brake horsepower, but that's something I don't really understand because 
because uh, full size engines are rated like either six or seven uh, nominal brake horsepower. But I've no idea what this is. It, it, uh, it won't be anything like that, I wouldn't have thought. Well, I was looking at the, uh, at the cycle parts of the machine and it seems to be fairly short of brakes for something that weighs, I think you said it was 375 kilograms? Yeah, three, well, 350, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you're definitely right in that respect. It's, um, the rear brake uh, is an external handbrake drum off uh, 1940s Willys Jeep. Just chosen because I didn't want a modern looking drum brake on it. It had to look something really old, so I came up with that idea. It hasn't got a front brake at all. Uh, so, and to be honest, the brake isn't anything special, but it does the job, it retards you slowly. So, it's just driving that wheel now by friction. You know, it's not in gear. So, yeah. So, how long has this incredible machine taken you to build? About four years in all. I spent the first, the first year building the engine, and once I'd done that, and, uh, and, I'd run it on compressed air, I knew it would work. I was happy with that. And then there was the saga of the boiler, where I spent all winter making a boiler. And, uh, and only to find, find out that um, my efforts were all in vain, really, and uh, I, I, I was much better, in, better uh, letting, letting a qualified man uh, build the boiler. So, um, so we did. So, and then from there on, I was just adding everything on. Uh, over the course of winter, where I have I have a good uh, three or four months spare from my work, so I spend every minute of the day beavering away, making things in the garage. Mm. And on the day that you first fired the boiler, how was that experience for you? Uh, very, very worrying. I had uh, a few friends round. One of them, uh, I knew I was in good hands because he, he, he's a local steam expert that I took a lot of advice from. And uh, basically, I was running around like an headless chicken, not knowing what was happening. And, he's, and he was saying, calm down, it's all right. And uh, steam flying everywhere, water flying everywhere, safety valves going off. But uh, uh, once I got the hang of it, everything was fine. And, uh, and uh, now I understand how it works and uh, how to control it, uh, uh, its pressure and whatnot. Uh, then it's not a problem at all, but very worrying at first if you if, if you knew if you're new to steam and you don't really really understand it really, you know. But uh, no, it's all right now. It's all right. 